Hello everybody. In this lecture, we will discuss how to manage a case of avulsion of tooth. Those of you who have not yet subscribed to this channel, please do so, so that you receive continuous updates. So let's go ahead with our lecture. Avulsion is a complete loss of tooth as a result of trauma. Now the treatment of choice is reimplantation of the tooth in its socket. You see, the goal of reimplantation is to restore, at least temporarily, the aesthetics and function. When we reimplant the tooth, what happens is that the bony tissue and the gingival tissue would heal normally, even if the tooth is lost later on. Therefore, the decision to reimplant the tooth is always correct, even if your extra alveolar time period is greater than 60 minutes. The outcome of the treatment is primarily dependent upon how quickly the tooth is reinserted back in its socket. And the best situation is that if this happens within the first one hour. The next is the age of the patient. It has been observed that the chances of pulp survival after reimplantation are maximum if the root formation is incomplete at the apex. That means it's an immature root. Whereas in a completely formed root, it has been observed that the chances of pulp survival are completely nil. First, we will discuss how to manage a case when a patient reports to you immediately after injury, say within first one hour. I will explain with help of a case. 19 year old man reported to the clinic with lost maxillary right central incisor. This is the radiograph. From the radiograph, you can see if you observe the root of the adjacent tooth that the root is completely formed. The tooth brought by the patient is carefully examined for any sign of fracture present in the crown or in the root. After this, the tooth is held by forceps and it is thoroughly rinsed with help of a stream of saline. And it is done till all the dirt and signs of contamination are removed from the tooth. Now this clean tooth is then stored in a dish containing saline. After this, we flush the alveolar socket with saline to remove coagulum that might be present there. Now with a tooth clean and an alveolar socket totally ready, we are all set to reimplant the tooth. The tooth is held with help of a forcep in the crown portion and it is partially reimplanted in the socket. After this, we use gentle finger pressure to completely reimplant it in the socket. Now, supposing during reimplantation you feel any obstruction or any resistance, what you have to do is you take the tooth out and you, in, you in take a straight elevator and insert it in the socket here, like this. You place your finger labelly in this portion. Now, with help of lateral pressure exerted, by the elevator and your finger, you reposition and remodel the socket wall. Once you've achieved that, you again grasp the tooth with a forcep and you reinsert it or reimplant it within your alveolar socket. Once the tooth is stabilized, it is splinted. In this case, splinting is done using composite, taking support from the adjacent tooth. Now you can see with help of this splint, the fracture, the avulsed tooth is nicely stable and fixed in its position. Now, as soon as after the injury, it is possible antibiotic therapy should be started and the tetanus injection, if the patient has not received, then it should be given. Also, very carefully give post-operative instructions, which include maintaining a very good oral hygiene that involves brushing the tooth with a soft brush and using chlorhexidine rinses. After splinting, radiograph is taken to assess the position of the tooth in the socket. You can see that the tooth is very well positioned in the socket. Also, you can observe that this is a mature tooth and the root formation is completed. Therefore, the diameter of the apical foramen here in this position is less than 1 mm. Hence, the chances of pulp revascularization are very less. So, we recall the patient after one week and we start with the root canal treatment. We take a round burr, you make an axis cavity on the lingual side. And with help of a barbed brooch which is placed inside the canal, the pulp is removed from the canal. 
After pulp extirpation, the root canal preparation is completed. Now the prepared root canal is flushed with saline with help of a syringe. This is done to make the canal moist because in this moist canal, calcium hydroxide paste is injected. Now this paste is, gets easily distributed in the canal with, in a moist environment and this is done with help of lentulospirals. Now any excess calcium hydroxide present on the margin is removed using cotton pellets. The excess cavity is sealed using intermediate restorative materials. You can see it here in the radiograph. Now once the cavity has been sealed and this initial endodontic therapy is over, the splinting material is removed using a fissure burr. Now it is very important to remove the splint after seven days. This is because to allow functional movement of the reimplant to reduce the risk of ankylosis. Now the patient is asked to come on follow up after two weeks, four weeks, three months, six months and one year. Now if the same situation happened with the primary tooth. In the primary tooth, the diameter of the apical foramen here it is greater than one millimeter. It is pretty large. Therefore, the chances of pulp revascularization are high. Hence, in this case, we do not perform root canal treatment. We replant the tooth back and socket and we splint it for two weeks. Then we could put the patient on regular recall and we check the vitality of the tooth. In case the tooth does not respond and the pulp goes in for necrosis, then we open the axis cavity, extirpate the pulp and we perform apexification, which is then followed by root canal treatment. Coming to a situation where the reimplantation procedure gets delayed, that means the time lapsed is more than one hour. I will explain with help of this case. An 18 year old man, he reported to the clinic about 14 hours after injury. He had lost his tooth. You can see it here from the socket. Now the tooth that he brought was cleaned, washed and it was thoroughly deprived. X-ray was taken of the site. The preoperative X-ray, it revealed that there is no bony fracture of the alveolar bone. Now in this situation, the root canal is done outside the mouth. The tooth is held in the hand and excess cavity is made. Pulp is extirpated, canal is prepared and calcium hydroxide is injected in the canal. So calcium hydroxide is used as initial root canal filling material. Now this tooth is reimplanted back in its socket. Sutures are given. In this case, splinting need not be done because the adaptation of the tooth was very good. It was held firm in its socket. Now the post-operative x-ray revealed calcium hydroxide placed all along the canal length. The patient was put on regular recall. Six months later, it was observed radiographically that the bone is well formed around the tooth. The clinical picture showed that the gingiva is healthy and the tooth is well adapted and firm in its socket. Now the recall after one year, the radiograph revealed that there is no sign of external root resorption and the tooth is firm in its socket. Two years later, it was observed with the x-ray that the signs of ankylosis of the tooth with the bone have started. You can see them here. However, the clinical picture of the tooth was very normal. So this is basically a successful case of a reimplant. The possible outcomes for a reimplanted tooth is either ankylosis or root resorption. Ankylosis we discussed in the previous case. In this case, we will talk about root resorption. Now here is a case. You can see there's a lost tooth. You can see the space in the x-ray. Clinical picture presents a socket and a torn gingiva here. The tooth was reimplanted back in the socket. Sutures were given and splint was given to the tooth to stabilize it. This is a picture after two months. This is the radiograph. It shows no pathology in the radiograph so far. And the clinical picture, the tooth is well adapted and the gingiva is healthy. Six months later, you can observe that root resorption has started in the apical area. You can observe it here. One year later, Radiograph reveals that the root resorption has become more severe. And two years later, it can be seen that most of the root has got resorbed. 
and only the crown portion remains standing. These are the references with help of which this presentation was made. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. Do subscribe to this channel to receive continuous updates. Also check out other lectures on dental trauma that have been covered so far. And check out the lectures on dental caries and occlusion. Thank you.